Good morning, everyone. It's Kika, your lifestyle blogger. And it is early in the morning. I got up and I went to Caribou Coffee and picked up myself a pumpkin mocha. Yes, 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 it's that time. It's about fall and pumpkin mocha flavors are out. And actually, that's my favorite time of year, fall and winter. Um, for going to the cabin because there's a lot of things that I like to do as far as working on the outside of the house which is very hard to do when there's bugs around so in the fall it tends to be very calm at the cabin and it's a good time to get some renovations and well-needed projects all completed so this is my favorite time of year that we are fast approaching but what I'd like to do in this video I know I promised you in my last video what we were gonna talk about cost and kind of everything that I spent, um, the mistakes that I learned from the first cabin that I did to this one. So what I'd like to do in this video is just do a little bit of a comparison on where I was and what I paid before and then where I am now and what I paid now and kind of what the difference was and kind of what happened along that journey that kind of sparked um, a fire under me into doing things more cost effective and more wisely this time around. So keep watching. More video footage coming up. All right, everybody, my dog Winston and I, we are at our first cabin. So we wanna give you a little bit of a tour of it. He's actually running around a little bit. So we're gonna give you a tour of the first cabin and then the bunkhouse so you can kind of check things out. So keep watching. So this is the first cabin. Here's that sign, the Bell Ray Cabin. And let's give you a, a little glance of the ground. So I got my RV and smart car there. We need new covers for that. Oh, our boat is sitting there too. And this is the ground. So, our hot tub, grill, something took the lid off, so we're going to put that lid right back in. Winston, over here. So this is kind of where we hang out when we're out here. Come on. This door was wide open when we came, so we just shut that back. But here's the cabin. I'm not going to turn any lights on, because we're not going to be here too long. But this is kind of a glance at what the first cabin looks like. So I purchased the first cabin um, at a place called Minneapolis Trailer Sales. And it was a place where they sell park models, RVs, and trailers. And so this particular park model, it was an older one, it was a 1990, and the side of it was missing because the previous owner had created an add-on, which was fine to me because I knew that this park model was a little bit smaller than what the association in the cabin community where I'm at allowed so I knew I would have to do some additions so I was okay with purchasing something that needed work and that turned out to be a good thing 
because the park model ended up costing me $9,999. Now, the deal I made with the actual trailer place is that I would make payments over the next three to four months and then come spring, I should be all paid up and then I could take delivery of the park model. And that is exactly what I did. I paid approximately $2,500 to $3,000 per month because I work over a sales job and then we get bonus from our sales. So I use that as my leverage to be able to obtain this park model. After um, I took delivery, um, after I made the last payment, the delivery was actually um, made and that was at no charge because that was all included in the base pricing. And here's a video of what the bug house looks like. All right, so we're gonna give you a, now a tour of the bunk house. So this is for extra sleeping space when we have guests here that come to the cabin. Excuse the steps, we haven't quite got to that part yet. Ah. So, inside the bunkhouse, we have two cots laying here on the bed. This is going to be what is actually going to be in the bunkhouse. We are going to take this bed out of here and move it to um, the second cabin because um, it would look better in that back bedroom space. Um, so we're going to do that. And we'll probably even move that as well. Um, but we haven't done the staining of the walls or anything yet. And that's, that's to come, we're gonna do that. Um, we have some storage up there. We have storage up here. So the bunkhouse is, is actually what it is, a bunkhouse. Nice extra sleeping space for our guests. Now with the bunkhouse, I was able to put down an initial payment of about $600 and then pay $115 for 60 months. So that's right about five years. So $115 with $600 down, got me the bunkhouse on my land, absolutely no credit check. And then the bunkhouse was delivered. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the first cabin and the bunkhouse. Stick around as I show you the second cabin. Keep watching, more video footage coming up. All right, you guys, we're in the car. Oh, it's a hot fall day. But anyway, there's my Pooh Bear. Say hi, Winston. It's my travel buddy. We left Tigger at home. Those two together are crazy. But anyway, um, so now I'm gonna show you the way to the second cabin. So keep watching, more video footage coming up. Excuse my front windows, guys. Um, bugs are crazy up here at the cabin. Not really too much right now, which is, this is a good time. I'm gonna come back next weekend and finish some painting and stuff that I really wanna get done. Um, but when you come up here, it's just crazy and horrendous of how the bugs are. So anyway, we are on the way to the second cabin. So just gonna show you, that's the first cabin. And we're gonna go down this block and around the corner to where my second cabin is. I don't think I'm gonna go in there just because uh, it just basically left there. I'm kind of doing my video for the backwards. But I do wanna show you how close they are. So of course we have the trail that you can take, our own private trail that you can get to both cabins, but when needing to come out on the road, this is the way. And you see that address? I'm the only one on this road. So I'm hoping more people will get their cabins. And you pull in there. That is my second cabin.
everybody. So I am at cabin number two. So I'm gonna give you a quick tour of cabin number two so that you can see what this one looks like. So I think you've seen earlier videos of the painting and all that stuff we did. We still have to secure the siding, but um, here we go. So keep watching. All right, so for cabin number two, we are entering into the front door of cabin number two. And cabin number two's name is the Bell Ray Cottage. There's our little ore thing. And here we go. Alright. So, the nautical theme in this cabin. I apologize for the low light. We don't quite yet have the electricity hooked up yet, but we will very soon. Um, so, this area that I am showing you is the great room slash living room area. Um, where everyone would come and hang out and it's a pretty big cabin it's actually twice as big as the first cabin and then we have our kitchen area I still have yet to put the stove and fridge in here um, I'll have more videos for you in the coming week of that but um, this is what we have so far so the fridge is actually gonna go there and the stove will go here I just painted this hood, vent hood today, um, so it can match the stove. I did some painting today, so we can't go in every area of the house, but I'll show you what I can. And excuse the mess on the back shelf. Those are things that we are keeping and that we need to store in closets and things like that, but we still have some cleanup work to do. Um, I just started painting this floor in this room. Not quite done. I still have some edges to do, but I'll wait till everything dries. And then I started painting the floor in the laundry room and this back door here. And so um, I decided I wanted a red washer and dryer, but I decided to go ahead and leave this one white because I really like this cute towel sign that I found from Hobby Lobby. So we're going to just go ahead and keep that the same color back on out of the laundry room here I'll just kind of give you guys a full view of what the living room looks like so just a few things to tidy up the space but otherwise it's uh, pretty simple and this is what we are working with this is actually going to be our bar area when we're all done I have a couple of bar stools there All right, you guys, so let's discuss the second cabin here. I wrote down some tips, so excuse me if I look away from the camera a little bit, but I wanna make sure that I cover this in full detail so that you are aware of exactly what I did with the second cabin and the differences. So the first thing um, oops, about the second cabin, it took about three months after adding the bunkhouse before I decided that a second cabin was actually needed. My family was growing bigger and bigger and it was very important that I get a space where all of us would be able to come and enjoy and spend the night there if we wanted to. So that was a, a big important and it was on top of my list and I needed to get that done right away because to me, time is of an essence when you are thinking of doing such a big project. So immediately what I did is I started looking for deals. This time around, I decided I wanted to do something older and used. Um, the older, because the older ones, I just like the way that they were built. They're a lot bigger and used because I could then um, save on the cost. I didn't think $10,000 of what I paid for the park model before was a lot. And so as I researched used ones, and especially because I wanted to go a little bigger, I figured that was the route to go. So what I did is when I did eventually find one, I found it on Craigslist. I paid $500 for the actual mobile home. Now this mobile home had been sitting for about, I want to say 20 years. It was a 1974 mobile home and um, it was sitting for about 20 years, but I would say give or take 10 years at most before anyone has lived in it. Um, it was old clothes rotted inside. Um, the um, rodents had ticken over this mobile home, but the bones of it was well kept. Um, it was new um, interior walls. 
it had a new furnace, kind of all of that stuff. So the bones were really good. Um, so I wanted to make sure um, that I kept this mobile home because I think it was personally, to me, a diamond that was in the rough. And I knew that I was the person to be able to bring it to operational use again. So I did a deal with the owner. I paid the $500 and I paid an additional $500 because in my research, I learned that these mobile homes, people typically don't like to move them. Um, they're very hard to move because they could fall apart when they're coming down on the road. And I knew it would take some time to find a mover. So I paid him an additional $500 to leave it there on his land for an additional couple of months while I researched a mover. And so total, I paid $1,000 for the mobile home. Finally, I did find a mover. And this particular mover was a guy who just started his business. He had something that he really wanted to prove. Um, so it was important to him to do this project and he agreed to do it for $5,000. Now, that included the permits and everything that he had to, to get, um, the escort, all of that stuff. Um, and so I utilized him and we got the mobile home moved. And luckily it did not fall apart on the road. It was safe. The siding buckled a little bit because there was high winds that day, but nothing that we couldn't fix when it got to the land. So thumbs up on that. That worked out perfectly um, in getting the mobile home to the land. Um, the other part of this, let me see, I want to make sure I'm covering everything. Let's just do a little bit of a recap on the cost. So first and foremost, I had to have a survey done just to know where my lot lines was. So before we could even start the septic, the well, kind of all of that stuff, I had to have that done. And that was $900. The mobile home cost was $1,000. We just talked about that. The mover was $5,000, we just talked about that. And to have the actual um, septic done, that was $8,300 because the land where this mobile home is wasn't exactly like the land I had my other one on where we could do the gravity septic system. This one had to have a bunch of pumps and all of that stuff. So it cost quite a bit more. So I had to pay that. And then it was about $900 to do a path between the two cabins because the lands connect. And then um, the supplies for the renovation and the decorating and all that, I paid about $4,000. So total, the first cabin I would say was about $35,000. This cabin with everything, probably about 15 to 20. So it was significantly lower the second time around. And I really thought about things thoroughly this time around and um, I believe it worked out nicely. The last thing that we are working on to put in is the electricity that has to be done. So I do have an electric company already because of the first cabin. And so I met them out there and they are going to put a pole this time. And then I'm gonna hire an electrician to put the box so that we may we'll be able to plug in the electricity. So that is key because in this cabin we have a washer and dryer. And I wanna make sure everything is working properly. Um, and the washer and dryer is really nice because we will be able to use it actually for both cabins to wash clothes, wash comforters, or whatever else we need to do. So that is a recap of what I paid for this cabin the second time around. And as you can see, it was a little bit more of a cost savings um, than what I did for the first cabin. But thumbs up. We are almost finished. So keep watching. All right, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed that video of cabin number two. So keep watching, more video footage coming right up.